Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to the Pokemon Yellow Nuzlocke randomized run. God, it's a mouthful whenever I try to say that. Anyway, um, <laughs> today we're going to continue on with our adventure. I know it hasn't been that long since my last update with this project, but in reality it's actually been several, several weeks now since I've last played this. Uh, because... I was originally going to film, along with the session of the last two videos, I was going to film pretty much up to the rock tunnel part of the game, but I ended up actually scrapping that because um, about halfway through that recording I started uh, getting kind of sick a little bit. I just was not feeling very well, my stomach was really, really aching, and I just just really wasn't feeling that well at all, so I was like, you know what, I'm in Vermilion, I'll just go ahead and break here and finish this up later, and uh, that is what I'm doing now, so uh, before we actually go any further, we're going to go ahead and get a few Pokemon. Our Diglett's Cave Pokemon is going to be Zubat, alright, okay. Um, I, I'm okay with this. Um, not really a big fan of Zubat and the Zubat family in Generation 1, but... With Generation 2 and onward, you get the evolution of Crobat, which I really, really approve of. Uh, Crobat is definitely one of my favorite Pokemon in the entire series of the Pokemon franchise. Uh, I'd say it's probably even my second favorite overall. Uh, maybe third favorite, because I really, really like uh, Greninja and Generation 6. But uh, Crobat has been a favorite of mine for a very, very long time. When I first got one, it, like, wrecked everything. I just really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I might actually try to use a Zubat here. Um, <laughs> I love how it just says bat right there. I love how it says bat. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's give it a nickname. I'm just going to call it bat. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know why I find that so funny. But, yeah, um... I might try to use one. I don't really have a flying type yet, so I suppose it could be of some use. Plus, it's going to evolve in a few levels anyway, so once I do my next training session, it'll be a Golbat already, so I think I can deal with that. But before we go any further, we can also get another Pokemon in this little region right here. Let's see if we can get something good. Give us something good. Give us something good. Ah, oh, Goldeen. Well, I suppose we could capture this. We already have enough water types as it is, but... You know, there could always come a time where I lose all of my water water types and I'll have to rely on others, so... It's always good to catch one just in case, I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a Pokeball at it and add it to our collection. Goldeen was caught. Let's see, what should I name this thing? Oh, Goldfish. I was expecting another really awesome name there, but I guess not. Um, let's just go with... Yeah, let's go with this. We're gonna go... I know it's not really a uh, Guppy, so to speak, but we're gonna call it Guppy. I mean, hell, they named like a fat little whale shark in Super Mario Galaxy Guppy, so... Why can't we do the same here, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. That's what I thought. Also, yeah, um, that police officer you saw down there, um, in the actual yellow version, she will give you a Squirtle if you uh, beat Vermilion City's gym. In this game, I have no idea what she's going to give us. We won't find out until we beat the Vermilion City gym. At this point, though, I'm not sure if I have a Pokemon that can learn Cut, though, and that kind of worries me. Because in a particular Nuzlocke run, if you don't have a Cut Pokemon, your run is finished. You can't get another one, so... I would honestly be kind of screwed if I didn't have that, but... I don't know, I have a few Normal-type Pokemon. Maybe I could get lucky in one of them knowing Cut. I hope, anyway. Otherwise, that's just going to be a BFB, big fat bummer. So before we go to the SSN, let's go ahead and start fighting these trainers. 
Um, unless they have something very, very hilarious or a funny Pokemon or a Pokemon that could potentially wreck my team. Uh, not a lot's going to happen here, so I guess I'll just start talking about Pokemon related things. Uh, I never really got into this during my Generation 1 playthrough, but I never really talked about my origins of Pokemon at all, really, so I figured that because we have this section and then also the SSN section, not to mention the section leading up to the Rock Tunnel and the Rock Tunnel, I think this would be a good time to kind of explain like my Pokemon origins, just as a little bit of a story time. If I see something interesting on the screen, I'll go ahead and highlight it, but um, it's going to be mostly trainers here, and I seem to be kind of over-leveled as it is, so I think I can safely just go on discussion topics here. So um, my origins of Pokemon, I discovered Pokemon back during Generation 1. Uh, I was of that age when Pokemon first started becoming popular, all the kids were talking about it. Uh, whether it was the video game, TV show, card game, it was pretty much everywhere. And for a while I didn't really have much of an opinion on it, but then one of my friends would not stop talking about it. Uh, would keep bringing up uh, the cartoon show, they'd keep bringing up uh, the Pokemon games, and all of this other stuff, and I was just really, really intrigued because well, I knew nothing about Pokemon. I knew it was a big thing going on, but I had no real interest in actually uh, being a part of it, so to speak. So, um, over time, he kind of started introducing me to things uh, very little by little. Uh, he showed me that Pokemon uh, Nintendo Power tape. I don't know, there was this tape that came with Nintendo Power. It was when Pokemon was first starting. It was kind of uh, their way of introducing new people to the series and whatnot. So I watched it, I thought it looked pretty interesting. I also ended up watching an episode of the TV show, which uh, it was a very weird episode to enter on. It was the, uh, the School of Hard Knocks episode, which was, I don't know, it's just a very, very weird episode to enter the series on, I'll just say that much. But that was my very first episode of Pokemon. I somehow enjoyed it. I loved the episodes that followed it too. I think there was uh, the episodes that followed it were kind of the uh, episodes when Ash starts getting all the starter Pokemon like Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and I really loved all of them. I could recognize them from that Nintendo video that I watched. So, uh, oh god, Articuno! <laughs> I just now realized I'm fart fighting Articuno here. Uh, but anyway, like, um, so yeah, I was, <laughs> I, uh, got into those episodes a little more, uh, then it was when I started actually wanting to get into the video games, and it was around Christmas time, so I was like, okay, well, I'll just ask for the games for Christmas, and or my birthday, because my birthday is the day after Christmas, so I told my mom and my dad that that is what I wanted, I wanted, uh, one of the Pokemon games. I put down both red and blue on my Christmas list saying that it didn't really matter which version I got, I just wanted one of the Pokemon games. I didn't really care which one, I didn't have a preference. My friend really wanted me to get the red version though for some reason, I don't know why. Like He kept trying to convince me that all the better Pokemon were in the red version, which I don't know if I'd agree with that. I'd have to actually look in depth with what you get in that version, but I, I don't really know for sure. But um, that's essentially the version he was really pushing me to get, so I put red version at a slightly higher priority, but in reality, I didn't really even care. <laughs> I really didn't care. Uh, so for Christmas morning, I did get Pokemon Red version. I was really excited. I played uh, pretty much the whole morning. I took it on the go and we went to our family's Christmas party and uh, played that pretty much the entire time. And at the very end of that Christmas party, my aunt gives me this present that looks like a Game Boy game. I open it up and it's the Pokemon Blue version, so <laughs> without even really caring about getting whatever version, I ended up getting both versions, both red and blue, so I would uh, essentially, like one day I'd play the red version. 
The other day I'd play the blue version, I'd just alternate between the two. At some point I did get further on the blue version than I did the red version. And uh, at some point in that game I also had like a level 60 blast toys, so... <laughs> I, I, that was the version I definitely completed first, with a lot of difficulty, mind you. Only because my blast toys was like super high leveled, I had to depend on it to do everything. And my next highest Pokemon after that was like a Nidoking, which was still like 20 levels under it. And then the rest of my team was even further behind, so... Yeah, that was a very interesting first playthrough. I don't even know if I actually did beat the game with that. I want to say that I did, but... Uh, it wasn't due to uh, me being smart or getting good at the game. It was due to like uh, glitches or the Masigno trick or getting Pokemon from my friend to help me. I really don't even know what it was, but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I, I completed the game at some point and um, have been a big fan of uh, Pokemon ever since, for the most part. Um, got into Generation Two. Really, really enjoyed Pokemon Generation 2, although I found myself not as intrigued with those games as I was the first generation games for some reason. I don't really even know why, it just... There was just something about the first gen games that kept me interested, probably because it was something new. And Generation 2 was kind of this, uh... Well, you know, this thing has been around for a while, uh... We're going to try to introduce a few new things to it, but, you know, it still essentially felt like the same game, just a different world, some new types of Pokemon and stuff like that. So, um, after Generation 2, I did kind of take a stop from Pokemon. I didn't really get any of the third generation games, so I essentially backed off from the series. And it stayed that way until pretty much the end of Generation 4 where I was at a Best Buy and then I noticed Pokemon Platinum for sale and it was at a pretty cheap price I had enough money to get a DS game so I was like you know what let's get back into Pokemon so I bought Pokemon Platinum I thoroughly enjoyed it not as much as I enjoyed first gen when uh, you know I first got those games or even as much as generation 2 for that matter but it got me in enough to the point where I wanted to keep following the series. Like, I wanted to get the next generations. I wanted to kind of experience the lifestyle of a Pokemon fan, so to speak. So, I uh, got Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yes, I did get both of them. And I also got Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. Yes, I got both of them. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, like, I, I got one of the versions like when they first came out and then later on down the road I was like I have enough money for two DS games so let's just let's just get Pokemon White and Pokemon uh, um, Soul Silver so I did that yeah I started with Heart Gold and Black but yeah that's um pretty much what I did that's pretty much what I did and uh, yeah I got Generation 6 when it came out I I stuck with the X version? I don't even remember what version I have. It's <laughs> They're just so, like, the names are just, like, so short you don't even remember, but I'm pretty sure I have the X version, yeah. Okay, yeah, I do. I definitely do. Because uh, I remember I also bought the Y version for my girlfriend, and I remember that it was interesting because, you know, I'm the male, and I have the Y chromosome, but she got the Y version. And then, yeah, I have the X version. That's right. Okay, so that's what happened there. And I also did get Pokemon Black too. I that's I haven't really played much of that though, to be honest. I started playing through it, and then I just kind of lost interest in the middle of the game, so I just put it down for a while. And uh, that's pretty much the story of uh, from the very beginning up until now. Uh, there is going to be a um, Pokemon. Hoenn remake coming soon. Uh, what's the uh, freaking names again? It's like Omega Ruby and I almost want to say Soul Sapphire, but that's not it. But um, yeah, there are remakes for the third generation games coming soon. 
I am definitely going to get one of those because I didn't really get to experience any of Gen 3. I The only Gen 3 game I've played is Pokemon Emerald, and that's for the Emerald Randomizer race that I'm doing with uh, Skinly and uh, Shots Rocks, but, um, which funnily enough is still not even over. Jesus, we need to get together and finish that. My god. But, um, yeah, that's the only experience I've had with Gen 3, and for not knowing much, I'm getting through the game just fine. I'm, like, very close to the end, and I'm about... I, I, have, a, I have a chance to win the race, despite never playing the game before, or any of the Gen 3 games. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I have to say about my Pokemon Origins and my journey through the Pokemon games. I can still see we're on Route uh, frickin' 11 here, so we haven't made that much progress. Uh, there's still like a, probably an hour left in this recording session. There's still a lot of trainers to go. But I did want to kind of go over that because, you know, I think the origins of Pokemon, you know, I feel like a lot of people start out very similarly. They, you know, they hear something about it, whether it's the video games, the card game, the TV show, yada, 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 yada. But, um, I don't know. I still think that every story is kind of unique in their own way. And, you know, there are those, you know, unique experiences that you have when you actually play through the game for the first time. I know that, like, when I started my file on the red version, I picked Bulbasaur. But I didn't pick Bulbasaur because I wanted to. It's because my friend really wanted me to pick Bulbasaur because I think he picked Charmander and uh, his brother picked Squirtle. So, you know, they didn't have... Uh, someone they could trade with who had a Bulbasaur, so I essentially just uh, picked Bulbasaur because, oh, uh, well, they don't have the other two, so I might as well get one. And then, uh, yeah, I picked Squirtle because Squirtle looked to be the coolest of the uh, other Pokemon that were left. Not to say that Charmander doesn't look cool or anything like that, it's just that I was more interested in Squirtle. I'm kind of a uh, water-type person. I think my nature is pretty similar to that as water. I love the color blue. Um, I love the sound of rain. I, uh, I just, I just love water. Water is just a part of me. It, it really is. Uh, humans are made out of water in some way. So, uh, yeah, that's, um, those are the Pokemon I picked. As for other stories, like, I know for the longest time, I didn't exactly know how the PC box, box worked. So for the longest time, like, I only had six Pokemon, and whenever I'd catch a new Pokemon, like, it said it'd be sent to, like, PC Box or whatever, I had no idea what they were even talking about. <laughs> I just was so confused. So, um, yeah, during my first playthrough, like, let's see, on my red version, on my red version I had, like, my Bulbasaur, I want to say I had a Pidgey. I had a Bulbasaur, Pidgey, Rattata, Spiro, and this is the weirdest thing, but I got both a Weedle and a Kakuna. So like I caught both of them, and at one point I had two Kakunas. So I was like, why did I do this? This was not a good move. And it was also one of those things where it's like, because I didn't have a concept for how the game worked, I put them in order in my lineup from strongest to weakest. You know, hoping that, well, I mean, at some point they're going to gain levels whenever my main one faints, so I'll just do it this way. I'll just send out my strongest Pokemon, let him do everything. When he dies, I'll use my next strongest. And that didn't really work. Uh, my Spearow was a level 2 Spearow for a very, very long time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't really have any Pokemon that really even came close to uh, getting up to their higher levels or even evolving. And, uh, yeah, similar thing with, uh, my blue version as well. I just didn't really get further far with that at all. I had, uh, both a Metapod and a frickin' Magikarp on that team. So, it's like I had two Pokemon that I couldn't really even use because they knew Harden or Splash and they couldn't even attack. So, it was like, how the hell am I supposed to even do this? How, how do I train these guys? It's just those little things you don't really you know, put together when you're a kid. You just don't really even think about it. But yeah, we, uh, I think we just actually finished up, uh, 
this route here. Uh, we got a lot of things done. I'm going to go ahead and purchase some more Pokeballs. I think I'm also going to purchase some more items like uh, Super Potions and uh, some of these uh, status healers as well. It's definitely more important to get these items when you're actually in a Nuzlocke run because, you know, you can get paralyzed or poisoned at pretty much any time in the game and put to sleep. Sleep is definitely one of the more annoying ones for sure. So I'll definitely get some things here and I will be on my way. So, um, I was just, uh, yeah, okay, I was just making sure. I was going to make sure that she actually said that she has a Squirtle, when in reality she probably has like a freaking, she probably has like a Hitmonlee or something like that, I have no idea, we'll find out later. But yeah, that's the, those are just de definitely some of the things I wanted to talk about in regards to Pokemon Origins, some of those first things that you just really, really, uh, <laughs> you always remember about the games despite how insignificant they may seem now like you know I'm sure there were a lot of people who were all like oh my god the first time I got a Magikarp and an only new Splash what the hell am I supposed to do but um you know still it's just it's just very very interesting I really really like I like and love the Pokemon series for all that it's brought in us it's brought us a lot of uh, good times a lot of great memories and it's definitely one of my all-time favorite series now. I may have skipped Generation 3 completely, but, you know, it was a series I really, really fell in love with hard when it first came out, and it was a series that I loved enough to go back to it after even putting it away for a while, so I think I'd even put it in my top three video game franchises of all time, uh, along with the Mario series, and... God, I don't even know what I'd put for my third favorite. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really like answering those questions about what's your favorite game series or name your top ten or whatever because, you know, there, there's so many different things. Like, I love the Mario series for a particular reason that I may not love about the Pokemon series, but there's something about the Pokemon series I love that Mario doesn't have. So, it's a very open-ended question with um, a lot of different answers, really. But yeah, I wouldn't put Kirby in the top three. A lot of people think that Kirby is my favorite series, but really it's not. It's kind of weird. It's not my favorite. Um, not like for any like negative reason or anything like that. It's just that I don't know. I'm just I'm just not a super fan of the series. I, I wish I could be, but I'm just not. Um, it's a great game series. I love it, but it's just not my favorite. I liked it enough for me to name my um, online name based on the Kirby series, but it's not my favorite. I don't know, I think it's just because when it comes to series like the Mario series, there's more you can do with it. Because, you know, I love platforming, I love RPGs, I love puzzle games, I love party games, and, uh, you know, on occasion I love sports games. and. That's the thing with Mario, Mario has all of those franchises. And not they're not just like very bad made games or anything like that. They're all like good quality games. And that's just the thing I really really love about the Mario series. Because it doesn't matter what you're playing. You could be playing like Paper Mario one day, you could be playing Mario Galaxy the next day. And then you could be playing a game like frickin' Tetris Attack, or Mario Party 2, or Mario Golf Advance Tour, or whatever you're playing. It's Whatever you're playing, it's a good time. And that's what I really love about the Mario series. Uh, Pokemon, you could almost say the same thing. I mean, there's puzzle games, there's adventure games like this, there's just 3D battlers, and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, it's it has variety to it. Hell, that's one of the things I really loved about Pokemon Conquest when it first came out, because it was a new style of the Pokemon game. And it was very, very unique. So I was really, really, really proud of the series for going in a direction like that. And yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my piece on all of that. <laughs>